the events of a single heartbeat. So what is a single heartbeat? A single heartbeat is the contraction of the, and relaxation of the atria, followed by the contraction and relaxation of the ventricle. And you have to remember, right, that even though when we talk about blood flow, like you did probably when you drew an arrow or whatever when you were doing that, you know, there's a logical way that a, a drop of blood would flow through the heart, you know, vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, pulmonary capillaries, pulmonary vein, left atrium, left ventricle aorta, right to the body. So that's the way blood would flow. But as far as a physiological event, the heartbeat is coordinated so that the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit are driven at the same time, right? Meaning that the two atria contract simultaneously and the two ventricles contract simultaneously. So when we say atrial systole, we're really talking about both of the atria contracting, atrial diastole, both of the atria relaxing, ventricular systole, both of the ventricles contracting, and ventricular diastole, both of them relaxing. So, so blood is pulsing out of the arteries, the great arteries, the pulmonary trunk and the aorta simultaneously. Now what's interesting is blood flow is the same in both of those. Even though the force of contraction in the right side of the heart is a lot less than the left side of the heart, right? remember the differences in the thickness of the myocardium, the blood flow is the same because what's different about them is the resistance. There's a lot less resistance in the pulmonary circuit, so it doesn't take as much pressure to have the same amount of flow. Right, remember, flow is proportional to blood pressure over resistance. Right? To have the same amount of flow, if the resistance is less in the pulmonary circuit, the blood pressure is going to be less as well. Okay. So oftentimes when we talk about pressures and we're studying how the heart works as far as cardiac output and efficiencies and things like that, we're really talking about the systemic circuit. But everything is exactly the same in the pulmonary circuit. It's just that it's a less pressure, right? Less resistance, but the same amount of blood. Okay. Now, when the atria contract, right, as far as pressure, pressure is going to build up in the atria. And as the atria contract, whatever blood is in them is going to get pushed into the ventricles. That makes sense, right? And it flows through uh, a, a, a cuspid valve, depending upon right or left side, so you're going to be bicuspid on the left, tricuspid on the right. It doesn't really matter, right? But it flows through that valve. But you have to also remember that that valve is kind of open, always at rest, right? And as soon as blood comes back to the atria because of gravity, it's going to go to the ventricles. So even though we say the atria contracts and blood moves from the atria to the ventricles, that is only about 15% of the volume of blood that can be in the ventricles is due to atrial systole. The rest of it is just due to gravity. You know what I mean? So we, we call that passive filling of the ventricles. But then, when the ventricles contract, right, that generates enough pressure to force the atrioventricular valves closed force open the semilunar valves, and blood is ejected out of the arteries of the heart, pulmonary trunk and the aorta. And it goes to the respectively the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. And this ventricular systole then is followed by ventricular diastole. The ventricles relax as a result of, of uh, 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 removing calcium and things like that from the the uh, cytoplasm of the muscle cells and they relax. And then we're left back where we started here. So this is the cardiac cycle. Those are all mechanical events. Now you know from what we studied with muscle cells is that muscle cells contract in response to electrical stimuli. Okay. Now the heart's electrical stimuli is self-contained, meaning that we call it an intrinsic conduction system in the heart, right? Um, there are special cells, so if we looked at cardiac muscle tissue, the cells that we would have in cardiac muscle tissue, there are contractile cells, and that's like about 99% of all the cells in the heart are contractile, meaning that, that in response to a stimulus they contract, which is just like any muscle cell would do. <coughs> But then there are a few specialized muscle cells that are called autorhythmic. And that's only about a percent of the myocardium being autorhythmic. They do not contract. They don't have sarcomeres. They don't have acne. They don't have myosin. They are developed from 
muscle tissue, but they've lost the ability to contract. But what they do is, is they generate electric action potential because of that. So they're like little axon hillocks of the heart, right? Their job is to generate an action potential. And that action potential is that action potential spike, just like we've talked about before. The values are different, okay? The peak's different, the resting potential's different, the threshold's different, but the result is still that spike. You have a depolarization, a repolarization. Okay? That's their job. So when we say the heart has its intrinsic conduction system, it has the ability to generate its own signal. But it generates a signal at about 100 beats per minute. Now, does your heart beat at 100 beats per minute all the time? No, at rest it's less than that. And during activity it's higher than that. So you have to have the ability to modulate that rate, right? So your sympathetic nervous system can increase the rate. Your parasympathetic nervous system can decrease the rate. So while it can generate its own signal, you modulate that signal by CNS activity. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So we can see electrical events of the cardiac cycle as well. And we know that those electrical events of the cardiac cycle are going to be started when some of those special autorhythmic cells generate action potentials. And that's called the SA node. 